you've reached the final lesson in my Cryptography Essentials series. And if you play back the transcript, you'll find we haven't mentioned elliptic curves once. But what if I told you we've been talking about elliptic curves this entire time? Let me explain. For the last eight lessons in this series, we've been discussing asymmetric cryptography. And I want to start this lesson by quickly summarizing what we've talked about so far. We started by defining asymmetric cryptography as a set of mathematical operations that can be performed with one key and verified or undone with another key. One of those keys is generally made public and then the other one is kept private. We then discussed the three different operations that exist within asymmetric cryptography. We have asymmetric encryption, signatures, and key exchanges. And then finally, we discussed the three algorithms that you can use to do one or more of these operations. RSA, Diffie-Hellman, and DSA. All of this we covered earlier in the series, so if any of this is unfamiliar to you, please check out the links in the description. As for us, now that we've already covered all this, we can have a productive conversation about elliptic curve cryptography. Elliptic curves are generally visually represented like this, but they can take many other forms as well. A curve itself is just a plotting of points that make this algorithm true. So for each curve, you have an x-axis and a y-axis, and any of these are simply values for x and y that would make this formula true. And what makes each curve different is different values for a and b. Which means that when you're choosing to do elliptic curve cryptography with somebody else, you also have to choose a particular curve to do that cryptography on. For the rest of our discussion, we're going to continue using this as the example of a curve. Now each of these points on this plot is simply a different xy coordinate which is going to make this statement true. So for instance if I pick two points, p and q, p is going to have some xy coordinate and q is going to have a different xy coordinate, but both of them are going to make this statement true. Each of those points on the curve represents a particular value, and elliptic curve cryptography is going to do math on those values. So far in the course we've been talking about these three algorithms. These algorithms are doing math on positive integers. Positive integers are any whole number greater than zero, numbers that you and I use every day. And so each of these simply require you to combine various numbers in different ways, using operations like multiplication or exponentiation. Well, it turns out you can do the same math that these algorithms require you to do using points on a curve. And that's exactly what elliptic curve cryptography is. For instance, any of these might require you to combine positive integers. But there's also a way to combine the points p and q in a similar way to get a third value, in this case r. And all elliptic curve cryptography does is simply do the same math that RSA, DSA, and Diffie-Hellman require you to do, using points on a curve instead of positive integers. Which means each of these algorithms that we've been discussing this entire time also have an elliptic curve variant. Each of these are simply doing their respective algorithm on a curve. Now, in the case of ECRSA, it turns out that doing RSA on an elliptic curve is not any more secure than just doing RSA naturally. So you don't actually see ECRSA used in practice in the modern world. The other two, however, you see used all the time. Both ECDSA and ECDH are both more secure and require smaller keys than their non-elliptic curve variants. So anytime you're needing a signature, instead of doing DSA, you should do ECDSA. Or anytime you need a key exchange, instead of doing Diffie-Hellman, you should do elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman. So in a way, you can see that we've been talking about elliptic curves this entire time. So everything you've learned about these algorithms also apply to these algorithms, with one exception, of course, ECRSA, which is pretty much never used in the real world. And that wraps up everything I wanted to communicate to you in this lesson. Now, of course, we could go much deeper on elliptic curves, but this again is just a crypto essentials course. So the main thing to understand about elliptic curves is that all they are is simply doing these algorithms on a curve instead of doing them on positive integers. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.